you know, bass doesn't have to just be doubling the riff below fret five. It can be so much more. And I think that's one of the things Cliff is remembered for most. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Lone University. And this week, I'm super excited to cover Orion. And I feel like this is sort of obligatory for me to at least cover the song in this series. And I'm sorry it's taken me so long because I've seen a lot of um, Metallica in the comments here and there. And uh, plain and simple, this is the song that really showed me that bass could be more than just a foundation instrument. Um, you know, the late Cliff Burton really showed me and the rest of the bass world how the bass can be a lead instrument and have different textures and fit into the guitars differently than just doubling the riff. And uh, yeah, I can't say enough about this song. So this is obviously Orion, uh, instrumental from their third album, Master of Puppets. Uh, let's see if I can do a little bit of trick editing here and just pull this right out of here. So this is a part of my top 10 wall behind me, has the top 10 most influential albums to me as a bass player, and this was no exception. I mean, just look at these guys on the back here. Um, yeah, this was the last album featuring Cliff, of course. Uh, this is obviously a landmark metal album, and it never gets old to me. And... Um, Man, I wish there was a live performance of this because I love to do live performances here on this series so I can really kind of watch and see what's going on. But uh, we'll have to listen today, and that's totally okay with me. So before we get too much into the rambling of my love for Metallica, let's jump in. This is Orion from Master of Puppets. And one of the big things that really opened my eyes when I first heard this record, I thought this was guitar, and I'm sure a lot of people did. A lot of people still do. I was like, oh, this is just like a guitar chord fading in. No, it's Cliff using a lot of cool effects. And I just didn't think of the bass capable of doing something like that back then. It's such just a foreboding building sound great. So we're in the E minor for this main riff, um, and it kind of goes to this B minor thing. It goes up sort of a chromatic half step, and I just wanted to point out their use of kind of the harmonic minor tonality here. You know, a lot of metal bands and a lot of metal records from this era, to build tension and have that darker sound, they have a tendency to use this sound a lot. You'll hear it on Megadeth Records, Slayer, any of the big four, Testament even. And, you know, rather than doing like, you know, smarty pants music stuff like minor four, secondary dominance, other things you build tension with and maybe jazz or pop, you know, metal kind of gravitated toward this just harmonic minor sort of Middle Eastern scale sound. If it wasn't the tritone, which is just a flat five, they kind of did this. So an E minor scale, they just sharp that seven. So you make a chord off that in the five. That's kind of what's going on here. Kind of gives it that dark sound. You still have that bass fade in under it, just grinding. I love it. Again, another thing that came up when I first heard this, and I was like, oh, that's just like a, a guitar part. It sounds like it's distorted. You know, bass wasn't supposed to be distorted. Bass wasn't supposed to be overdriven. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and credit Cliff for that complete movement of bass just really blossoming over the last 30, 40 years. But, 
you know, to me, this showed me that, oh, I can really get off of these first five frets. I don't just have to double the riff. And this is a, a complete lead part. I know Cliff had a huge, you know, involvement writing this song to begin with. This is always kind of hailed as this song. And what's really unfortunate is I never played it live until in my notes, it says 2005. And obviously they've played it uh, little bits of it with Jason on the black album tour, uh, just an interlude, but there was just no live performance of this. And I, you know, I certainly wish there was, but this is actually a pretty hard little bass riff. It's just fast. Um, you know, I don't know if Cliff was using three fingers or two fingers for this part. It sounds like two. If you watch a lot of videos of him, he always sticks that pinky out. I think it was like a broken pinky sort of incident or something, or, uh, it healed wrong where, you know, he just wasn't, it just didn't look kind of normal. And a lot of people think he was plucking with his pinky and he actually wasn't, but I know he's used three fingers some, but this, even for two fingers, this is really fast. <laughs> And again, it's the guitars taking the back seat and letting the bass player shine. And again, that was just so foreign to me. And for its time, you know, Cliff really kind of paved the way for a lot of bass players thinking like that. So let's keep going. Taking it down, doubling it now. Something little subtle I want to point out is there's a little stop. And if you're going to play bass in a metal band and you want to be tight with those guitars, you got to take, you got to kind of mimic the way they palm mute and choke notes off. And you can kind of hear it on this one note. They choke that note off. It doesn't go. Kind of like the, you know, the articulation in the part where he was playing lead, he kind of chokes it off now. You kind of have that choke off, and that's how you get it really tight. And you can hear they're really lining up with that. It's important. Back to that main riff in the intro. One thing I kind of like about these remastered versions, you know, a lot of people say, oh, why did they remaster something that was perfect? And I can understand that. You know, a lot of these legacy albums, when someone comes back around 20, 30 years later and 20, 30 years later and tries to kind of improve them, uh, you know, it can be kind of a mixed reaction. But, you know, I can hear the bass cutting through a little more, not necessarily bigger, but I can just hear it kind of the top crust of that tone just cuts through a little more. And I think, I think they really did a fantastic job remastering this record without taking away the initial vibe of it. Um, because the production on this album is just such a stamp in time, uh, both for the band and for metal production at the time. But I think they, I think they enhanced the really little things that I think could have been better. Um, and of course the original mix is fantastic, but uh, you know, this is the first time I've really listened to the remastered version in headphones, to be honest with you. And uh, I feel like I can hear some nuances of the bass tone cutting through a little more. Obviously, this solo is amazing. You know, a lot of people give Kirk Hammett hate, but he can write a melodic solo that's catchy. You can sing a lot of his solos, and I think that's a really redeeming part of what Kirk brought to the band. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of the first part of the song. Winding up, wrapping up. And 
kind of from here, it's Cliff's composition and magic. So before this goes on too much, I want to point out something I want you to be aware of as this goes on and something that really catches my ear today just as much as it did a long time ago is that the layering of composition in this next part is so smooth. And what I mean by that is this part comes in, it's a bass melody. That is the spotlight. And then when the guitars come in, they now replace the bass melody with another melody. So the bass melody sort of becomes more of a background. Ostinato, I use that word a lot here in this series. It's just a repeating musical phrase that has things changing around it. It becomes the constant. And then once the guitar melody is done, the bass changes a little bit and kind of comes back out and becomes the melody. And then the guitar comes back in with a different melody. And then they kind of join up at the end. And it's just the way that weaves through and those little subtle nuances and differences is honestly what I think gave Metallica the edge to be bigger than every other metal band. They had this side of them. They had the melodic sensibility. They had the wherewithal to understand the layers and the restraint. And it wasn't always just about speed and being pissed off and playing fast. You know, they had this side of them that, you know, when contrasted with their other heavier stuff, gave it a lot more context. And I, again, I think that's just the Metallica legacy that a lot of people will always remember. So let's listen to that. I want you to kind of notice this and think about it more like that. How are these parts functioning compositionally? It's brilliant. We're also going up a whole step, sort of F sharp minor now. See, now the guitar is the melody. The bass kind of goes back. It's great. Obviously, we're in a 6 8 time. See, the bass comes back out a little bit here, almost with a separate guitar melody. It's really telling a story. You know, like the, these guitar parts, like so many people think about this part in this song as like, oh, that's the bass interlude, the bass thing. I think these guitar melodies get overshadowed a lot. They are, they are telling a story. It's so lyrical. Like if we go back and kind of listen to that whole development, you can just hear, you can sing those guitar melodies and they just have a really rising, falling, just a lyrical nature to them that I think a lot of people forget because Cliff's doing some really cool stuff here, but don't let those go by. They're great. <laughs> It's like a vocal melody. It's just powerful. Forgot my lighter. Here they kind of join back up and are kind of doing some counterpoint. Great. Just great development. And before it goes on, obviously there's a lot of really good fill candy going on. We're obviously in 6-8 and Cliff's doing just some ad-libbing on those tail ends. You know, we have a... And every time uh, it kind of alternates with the... A lot of really good fills in there and when I was learning this in high school I was really adamant about trying to get every one of those right and kind of you know doing some variations myself because you know 
improvising on anything outside of four four when you're learning can be kind of weird because you don't have that comfort of where's the one. Well, there is the one, but you got six beats now. How to really do that? It almost is kind of swung in a way, kind of a metal version of a swing, but um, a lot of good stuff going on there. And I just love this whole way, or the whole way this next part builds. Bass becomes the melody again. So he's doing a little gallop kind of riff. This is almost like variation C. And I see this played wrong a lot too. So he kind of deviates from this thing. So now we're going. And then he does the same thing with those gallops, which is actually a little bit tricky to do. It feels best to just gallop it with a three finger for me. That kind of thing. But the whole way it builds to this section, this is kind of like the pinnacle of that interlude. And the counterpoint between the guitar and bass is just beautiful. It never gets old to listen to. There's that little feel. Dun get a gun get it. Boom. so seamlessly into another solo that's just as awesome. Bass solo. I mean, what can you say about that? Cool stuff. Like, what other, there just weren't a lot of bass players doing this kind of thing in that era. And, you know, if there were, Metallica was, you know, the squeaky wheel being up front. And, you know, just for guys like me picking up bass, listening to metal, I thought this was another guitar solo. The whole song just sounded like guitar solos aside that middle section that was obviously bass with a cleaner tone. And, you know, Cliff played bass like a lead guitarist. And, it made me want to do the same, and I feel like I still do. And a lot of the music I've played, I, I, I kind of have that tendency where it's like, nothing's off limits. You know, bass doesn't have to just be doubling the riff below fret five. It can be so much more. And I think that's one of the things Cliff is remembered for most. Being ahead of his time, having a full range approach to the instrument, but doing it with a lot of restraint and... I think we can all echo, I would have loved to see what he did musically had he not been in that tragic accident. You know, what would he be doing today? I'm, I'm just curious. Like we, you know, a lot of Metallica fans, including myself, think about that a lot. Um, and if it's anything like what he did in the first few albums, you know, I think it would be, um, I think it would just be paramount to bass playing today. I mean, there's just, you know, the possibilities would have been endless. But, you know, all we have is what we have. And that's still good enough for me. Just a great piece of music. Um, so that bass solo, tricky to play as well. I'm not going to sit here and break it down every little bit, but it was really fun to learn. It kind of taught me some... It, it's kind of done with a guitar playing-esque on some of those little things. That, that kind of thing. The bends, you know, bending on bass, something I didn't even think about. You know, when I first started bass, that was all you did. Funk octaves but this was just some really cool leaning into the more guitar territory something like that
and the way he harmonizes with the guitar, just awesome. Great heavy outro again. This always kind of reminded me of the way Fade to Black ended. Uh, just an all-out jam. Kurt just kind of ripping. Um, it, you know, it certainly has that parallel. You know, the first few Metallica albums they have a lot of like tendencies they go back to a lot, but they're always just really well done. Uh, it makes for a great live segment. You know, when they do this stuff live, I love watching the end of Fade to Black in a live performance. You know, anytime I I've, I've seen Metallica once, <laughs> and I'm hoping to see them again this summer. Um, with the Pantera re reunion thing, if I can get away. But uh, that was one of my favorite parts of the show. I saw them back on the Hardwired tour. The whole ending of Fade to Black, just a whole vibe. You know, people singing that melody, and they keep singing it, and Kirk's just still soloing. And just those little things about Metallica are just, just so much more than the thrash, the fast, the metal. They just have, they can create just a vibe with just honestly simple riffs you know i'm not going to say all the riffs are simple but there's just something about this band that has always drawn me back and it's just that little touch of melody and just the way they bring it all together it's just always just i'm going to say it a thousand times i just think it's brilliant it's just what sets this band apart for me <laughs> Bringing the heavy riff back. Woo, there you have it, Orion. Um, I'm so glad I got to do this one. It's been on my list. And I feel like I could honestly talk for hours about just all the cool things going on in the song. Just thank you to Cliff uh, for showing me what could be done with the bass. And, you know, in a short time here, that's the beautiful thing about music. Your music will always live on long after you do. And, you know, what can you say about the legacy he left? And, you know, I love Jason so much. I, I, I still think Jason was such a force to be reckoned with in the band. You know, I loved his energy he brought to the live show. And there's a lot more footage of that out there than there is with Cliff. But Cliff really set the bar. And um, yeah, rest in peace. Um, I had a great time reading that front to back or back to front Metallica Master Puppets book. If any of you out there have that, it's a great read. Um, I think he used the Aria Pro for this song. I know he was real big with the Rickenbacker, but I did a little research before this to kind of see if I could find what was he recorded with, and there's just not a lot out there, at least that I could find. But uh, I'm going to stop rambling. Metallica forever. I can't wait to see them again live. I'm hoping to catch them this summer. Please like this video. Thank you guys so much for all the love and all the support with this series. You guys have been excellent recommending me stuff. I am reading every comment, every recommendation. And I might start doing more of these each week just to keep up with it because they're piling up. Please make sure you're subscribed. Turn the bell notification on. These videos are going to come out every Tuesday. And I'm having a blast doing them. And I hope you are watching them. Stay tuned and we will see you next week. Cheers.